variation we're gonna variations we're gonna look at now are without white playing in King's Indian without them playing e4. So we know that Zemish starts with e4. Also, all the classical variations start with e4 followed by bishop e2, knight f3. The Averbach variations starts with e4. But there are some ways to play for white uh, where they don't go e4 and they don't fianchetto. If they don't go e4 and they don't go fianchetto, they obviously go e3, either immediately or after bishop f4 and bishop g5. So suppose they go knight f3. Now the best way to play these positions are d6 move. Best way to play is d6 move. Now let's see why we want to go d6 and we don't want to castle yet. Because first of all d6 is, uh, well, you have to play d6 if you play King's Indian. Um, in a variation of bishop f4 and bishop g5, d6 move makes difference. If white plays bishop to f4, then we go c6. Now, in order to understand what we're doing, I have to explain you uh, some problems black may run to if they castle in this position. Then white goes e3, and when we go knight h5, and we want to get this bishop on g5, on f4, it's very good for black to get this bishop on f4. Then black runs into some problem. Knight h5 is not going to achieve anything. Bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, and now g5. And it looks like black is going to get this bishop. However, in this position, white does not have to retreat the bishop. They can simply play knight d2, and as you can see, knight on h5 is attacked. And obviously, black does not want to take the bishop and let white play queen takes h5. That's not good. So, then black wants to save the knight. And if black goes knight f6, white goes bishop g3, and the dark square bishop is still alive, while black made some weaknesses on king's side without any result. So in this position, that's where we played knight h5. But now, let's see for a second if we don't have the castle, and we had c6. You see, now knight h5 works, idea works fine. The difference is between c6 and castle. c6 works much better because now black goes queen a5, creating the threat of knight to e4. And if white plays queen d2 or queen c2, Actually, on queen c2, we can also go bishop f5. And suppose white goes queen d2. Now, our idea of getting, now we're going to succeed getting the white's dark square bishop because knight h5, bishop g5, h6, and on bishop h4, g5. And black is going to get white's dark square. And why is it so important? Because after bishop g3, knight takes g3 and hg. We have very typical uh, king's Indian bishop on g7. So later on, we're going to go c5 and try to open this bishop to extend by playing bishop g4, we, and we're going to go c5 and knight c6 to put maximum pressure on white's d4 pawn, forcing them either take on c5 
or go d5, and in both cases, dark square bishop, black's dark square bishop will be open, which gives black very fine uh, game. So and again, after bishop f4 and c6, if white goes e3, we go queen to a5. Now suppose white wants to preserve the f4 bishop and also not allow knight e4. And if they go something like knight to d2, that will not be very good for them because black simply can go e5 and immediately get very active position. Knight f3 and knight d2 is total waste of time. Now, the same way this idea works, d6, if white chooses to play bishop g5, idea remains the same. Black goes c6, and after e3, queen to a5. Now you see we have created the threat of knight e4. White has to do something about it. They can go queen d2, queen c2, or bishop d3. On queen c2 again, bishop f5 is okay, and also we can go bishop g4. Threatening bishop takes f3, and you see that bishop on g5 is loose. So if white goes queen d2, we also go bishop g4, and now white has to take on f6, or go bishop h4, and then we simply castle, or we can even take on f3, when white retakes, we simply castle and continue with knight b to d7, we have very good position. That briefly covers, well that covers actually um, the white's idea of developing the dark square bishop and then playing e3. So we have a universal way to play against it. We go c6, uh, uh, we go this on a bishop f4. We go c6, and with the next move of queen a5, with the ideas uh, we just um, analyzed um, on the board. That will pretty much cover this. Now, a e3 variation may be also played without developing dark square bishop. Now, if white goes e3 right away in this position. Black will obviously castle, white will go bishop e2, but now I mean, black has no problems at all. They have several different ways to get good position. Well, let's, let's go over those possibilities. One of them is knight d7, actually both of them start with knight d7, and after castling, now black has a choice to go b6 with the idea of bishop b7 and they are doing just fine and later on e5 or they can go immediately e5 followed by rook e8 and then e4 and black is doing very fine too. Actually this position is very much from King's Indian attack if black's pieces were white and black had an extra tempo and extra tempo does not make that much difference now because position is closed so black is doing at least at least black is at least equal here so this is good position for black so e3 without developing dark square bishop is not going to get white anywhere. So all the possibilities with white playing e3 we already covered and not, there, are, there are not too many of them. Frequently we see, not on very high level, but from lower to upper medium level we see players play a London system kind of 
uh, structure. Well, it's going knight f3 in this position and then bishop e4, e3, and c3. How do we play against this system? Well, there is one very simple way to learn how to deal with it. On knight f3, we go g6 since we don't know yet what system white wants to play. They can still go c4 and transpose to classical, but they go bishop f4 or bishop g5. The system we're going to play will make no difference whether white goes bishop f4 or bishop g5. Okay, they go bishop f4, we go bishop g7, they go e3, and we go d6, and here is why we're going d6 first, we don't castle here, because you remember in knight f3, knight c3, and the bishop f4 variation, white still, we looked at white still can go c4 here, and now we go c6, and if white goes knight c3, then we transpose to the bishop f4 variations where we play queen a5. Well, when we went d6 here, white can go c3 or h3, preparing the retreat square uh, for bishop to h2. So black castles, black makes all the standard moves, White goes c3, black goes knight d7, white goes bishop e2. And here is the universal system that works well, works equally well, whether white bishop is on f4 or on g5. We go here b6, white castles. We go bishop b7. An important thing to know here White is probably going to go knight d2, that if they go a4, any time a4 is played, we want to play a6. What black doesn't want white to allow is to play a5. I'm explaining why. Because, for example, we went rook e8, white goes a5, and we go e5, and as expected, black, white goes bishop h2. Now, we have to always be aware of a6 move, which is going to represent some problems for black. Maybe not immediately, but later. Uh, also, taking a, b, and a, b, if our rook left already at, in the middle of the game, will open the A file for white. But the main reason is, of course, after A6 and bishop to C6, black's light square bishop may be in trouble. B4 and B5, very uncomfortable. So on A4, we want to play A6. So it, let's go again with the move order, move order stays the same regardless, regardless what white does until they play a4. Again, d4, knight f6, knight f3, d6, bishop f4, g6, or g6 and bishop f4, bishop g7, and e3, d6. That part move order makes no difference. Now, um, we go d6, and white goes c3, we castle, and white goes h3. All of you who, to, who plays King's Indian, I'm, I'm sure you have many times faced this way um, of playing by white. Um, in this position, black plays b6, white goes bishop e2, black goes bishop b7, a4 will be automatically met by a6. And if white now goes a5, black will go b5. You see, you don't have the problems we just discussed. If white doesn't play a4, white castles, 
we continue development. Knight d7 again on a4, a6 immediately. Knight d2, rook to e8, and we want to play e5. On a4, we go a6, and if white goes queen c2, we go e5, and on bishop h2, black is doing very fine. They can go queen e7, followed by e4, or they can go e4 right away. Most frequently, in this position, white takes on e5, and when black takes, then white goes bishop h2. Now, that, in this particular position, this is not a good way to play for white, because black can go e4, and on knight d4, c5, because a4, a6 moves, a4, a6 moves are included, and white cannot play knight to b5. But if a4 and a6 moves are not included, and black played e4 and knight d4, now black will go a6. They want to go a6. First of all, they want to stop white from playing bishop to b5 and possibly knight c6. a4 is good prophylactic move, followed by c5, and black white's pieces will have very difficult time to find good spots. So this is easy way to deal with uh, bishop f4, e3, and c3 setup. Now, slightly different if uh, black plays, uh, if white plays different move order, like d4, knight f6, knight f3, d6, the knight f3, g6, for example, bishop f4, bishop g7, and if white plays knight to d2. First of all, we can go c5, and that interferes with uh, white's e4 move, because on e4 we simply take cd, and we did not give white strong pawn center. If white plays dc, they are not gonna uh, keep the c5, extra c5 pawn, because we're going to go knight a6, and we want to take the c5 pawn, and on knight b3, the simplest way is to play knight takes c5, knight takes c5, and queen a5 check, and black has absolutely no problems, and the c5, after c5, if uh, white decides to play c3, then we can take c takes d, c takes d, and go even d5. Or, another opportunity is to play queen a5. Now, this eliminates e4 possibility because of knight takes e4. And queen on a5 stands well. It's a typical position. That's an easy way to play against white's attempt to go early e4. So, a knight d2, c5, is the simplest way to play for black. So, uh, and as only, only other thing is, after first two moves in this position, if white goes bishop g5, is this any different? It's a little different, but it does not make difference in black's way to play this position. Bishop g7, suppose white goes e3, we go d6, now they go c3, we go castling, they go bishop e2, we go knight d7, they castle. Now, I want to point that here, we can get black's white's light square bishop. We see, if bishop was on f4, as I mentioned, the same trick white has if we went after uh, white's dark square bishop. On knight h5, 
They go bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, and after g5, knight to d2, and white will get to keep their dark squared bishop, because black has to play knight f6 and then bishop g3. Completely different story if bishop is already on g5. Then we go h6, and after bishop h4, we will go g5. And on bishop g3, we go simply knight to e4, or knight h5, doesn't make any difference. And we will get black's dark square bishop, and white, uh, black is doing, uh, white's dark square bishop, and black is doing very fine. They can go e5 and f5 with a very active position in the center and on the king's side. So bishop g5, we have an additional uh, attempt to go h6. But if instead of castle, white played h3, then we can always transpose to the same plan we attended, uh, intended to play on bishop f4, b6, castle, bishop b7, same on a4, we go a6, made it exactly the same way, so we have no problems at all. And then we will go maybe h6 once, but we don't go g5, and we play e5, and we have very fine game. So this practically covers all the possibilities we can uh, see in uh, when white plays bishop f4 without c4, bishop f4, or bishop g5 by playing e3 and c3. So it's a very simple system and very easy to digest and use it anytime in a tournament game. This is Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for OnlineChessLessons.net First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.